This conference will now be recorded. Why, did you want to comb your hair first before we start recording or? No, I'm gonna clean my glasses. <laughs> ah, good luck with that. <clears throat> All is that Michael on the phone there, I see? I guess it must be. I don't hear him, yep. but that's good. Yeah, All right, uh, we'll bring this meeting to order. It is uh, 2.02. Welcome, everybody. Uh, yeah. Confirmation of the agenda. Someone want to... John, you want to move that? Uh, sure. And Mike will second that. Anybody opposed yep. to that? I'll second it, yep. Thank you. Anybody opposed to that motion? Seeing none, that's good. I'll take that as a as a pass. Uh, any declaration of pecuniary interest? Any item re on the on the agenda? Hearing none, if one should uh, rise, you can declare it at any time. There's no delegations. Adoption of the minutes of the last meeting. Someone or Lindsay, do you have movers and seconds for all this? No. I'll move no. or second. Would like to... So just put it, just put me in. Okay, Lindsay, you'll look after that. Anybody opposed to that motion? That's carried. Uh, staff updates. Um, Fruz Fawcett, what's going on with Mr. Fruz Tap? Um, so Fruz Fawcett, we had an issue with it. Uh, we went out and tested it, I think a month ago now, for a fire practice night, and we weren't getting enough water out of the faucets, which led us down the track to go find the intake that was covered in leaves. So there's been no maintenance done on it since it's been installed. Um, so we ended up, we weren't able to fill any of our trucks with it. So then we had to uh, tag it out of service for liability reasons. Since then, uh, I think the Holstein garage went out there and they skimmed some of the leaves out from it. We spent an hour the other day back, fill, uh, back flushing it. And so now we can take water out of it as long as we hook up two portable pumps out to the 65 ports. Um, it can fill a truck in four and a half minutes now with that option. Um, just wanting to know, is there a way that we can make that uh, maintenance plan, whether for the water department, since they do all the other tasks? Like all the other hydrants, they go out there once a year, grease up the ends and clean the leaves out, or how do we want to go about making sure that that issue doesn't happen again? Good question. So Mr. what was Milner? the best what was the best technology to solve the problem? We have a couple options, whether it depends how much council wants to invest into it. So like I said, right now we have to hook up portable pumps to the hydrant itself before we can fill our trucks. Um, obviously, Holstein has some high priority buildings there, such as a school, um, Gray County Housing, the mill there that's highly yeah, flammable. No, let, let's just go back to how do we maintain the upper end? I mean, the, the hydrant is working fine, but how do we maintain that upper end? Maybe you should talk to Corey and Jim. We have that, um, like we put, we had Fred look at it from Fred's trucking, I believe, and he said he couldn't do nothing with it. But his thing is a big catch basin sucker to suck those leaves out. And I think what his problem was, he was just gonna be sucking um, water and not getting leaves so much. I'm wondering if the uh, unit that the township has, it's smaller for cleaning out uh, uh, water boxes and so on would be better. So we talked to Phil about that. They sent it out. They honestly said the best way, because even with an excavator, you can't reach it. They had a pool uh, skimmer out there, and that's how they skimmed the leaves out. Okay. Um, but that comes down to the same sense. Do we want to leave it the same way where it is, where we're hooking portable pumps up to it? Or do we want to invest the money, put a pump house somewhere there, so that way you hook the hose up just like you would in town from the faucet to a truck? You eliminate the portable pumps hooking onto there and you will fill trucks a lot faster. But that's sort of council's decision on if they would want to go that route or leave it the way it is. And What about retrofitting it and putting a, just putting an extension from the inlet 
out into the water so that it just sits out in the water with water above and below it and around it. So that would help keep some of the leaves off. Um, I don't know if everyone's familiar where the intake is. Once you go up the driveway there, you have that driveway left to the dam. Right on the corner, it's the inlet for the faucet itself is about two feet offshore. And so there's all kinds of trees there that's all the leaves are coming down on it. If you extended it out into the lake more, um, you would be able to prevent all those leaves coming down, obviously, on top of it. It might give us some more head pressure, so then we might not have to give the portable pump. I don't know if that, I don't know if it's going to give much. Like right now, we're only getting 3.5 PSI and head pressure out of that. And you lose a PSI every meter you go up, right? And so to fill a tank or a tanker or a pumper sits two meters above, so you're at one PSI of water. It takes forever to fill a truck unless we run our portable pumps there, but we're dropping two portable pumps. It takes time, sets it up, and then you have somebody sitting there running the pumps to fill the truck. Or like I said, there's an option depending on, I don't know what the cost would be to add some sort of permanent shack there that you have a pump in there that will feed, pressurize it before it hits the hydrant. So then we have enough pressure to just hook a truck up to the hydrant itself. But Like for all it gets used, I mean, I, I don't think we want to spend a lot of money, but you know, spend three or $4,000 or 5,000 to extend out into the lake more or the pond might be valuable because I mean, it it really hasn't been used uh, to justify the costs that we put into it so far. Well, some of that problem is it hasn't been operational, right? Since I became yeah. chief here, we could have used that hydrant two or three times now, two times for sure. There's a fire right across from the bridge that they had to drive to South Cape Road 12 to take water out of. Um, the one, the shop recently, they also weren't able to grab water from there. And it's one of those things, like I said, you have the school there. You have Gray County housing there. Do you really want to play that game of, well, what we're not going to invest the money into it. It's nice to have it there if you need it. So, and like I said, Holstein, there's enough houses there in my mind in the school and that to justify putting, whether it's five grand into a pump house to feed that. So we know there's always reliable water then worrying about let's yeah. put the portal up there and see what happens. So there's a discussion. Well, just so I'm clear, <clears throat> the uh, the original design of the deal was that you could just hook onto the faucet or hydrant or whatever we want to call it, and there'd be enough head pressure there to run into the truck. Is that correct? That's what I was notified of. I've uh, I talked to Councillor Fru since then, and he said it was the idea was so you could hook a portable pump up to it, just so it would be able to. You wouldn't have to try and draft it out of the water, send right. somebody out of the ice. You would set a portable pump between mm -hmm. the hydrant and your truck, which would boost the pressure up and then pressurize it into your truck. Um, and that was sort of one of the reasons because the school, if when the school was going in because of the size of it, it would have needed a water reservoir on site unless there was a hydrant within so many meters. And so that's how they got away from the water reservoir is they put the faucet or tap or hydrant right there. Right, right. So the dilemma is when you hook your pump on, if the inlet is full of leaves, it won't suck enough water. Yeah, so the dilemma is the maintenance hasn't been done. There's been no maintenance schedule on it for right. however many years. And then there's the other option of are we going to drop portable pumps and run portable pumps off it? Or do we want to make it to the point where it's like a hydrant in town? There's enough pressure coming out of that. We eliminate the portable pumps before the truck and we just hook a uh, hose on there and fill our truck directly. There's only about a four meter change from where the inlet is to where the faucet exits the water. And so therefore, four PSI approximately is all you're going to get ever. Right, right. Unless you push. Right. What, what, about, what will you, can you push at or pull adequate water if you just hook up a pump to the, uh, like a truck to suck out of the... So we ran the portable pump because the two portable pumps last time, because if we put a bigger truck up there and we we're trying to pull, we tried it with the leaves. We didn't try it after the fact just because we were getting too much air. 
the hydrant itself hasn't been maintained. So the cap, when we hook up to our uh, six inch to it, the two caps on the side, the threads are basically almost destroyed on them that it's allowing air in there. And then our truck is sucking in air as well. And it's ruining our, uh, ruining our draft. Right. And it doesn't do the pump any good to suck air either. No. Um, <clears throat> I'm just wondering, uh, Dave, rather than uh, sending the pump or the pipe, rather the inlet out into the out into the pond further, why don't we send that rig that the township has and go up there and shred all that crap and corruption right between the dam and the driveway? Yeah, because it, well, you'd have to you'd have to head a little bit east too because it's just right in the or kind of the corner. So if yeah. you head took everything out to from the dam to the, the inlet and from the inlet on to the east maybe for 20 feet and got rid of that crap it would help um what about uh do you think it would be justified to put a second hydrant up at right at the, that inlet as well on its own that if you know you really had a bad fire we could open that up and get in there even in the winter time would so, a second hydrant be helpful? It would have to be a dry hydrant that you threw in there because you wouldn't get any, you wouldn't get head pressure to push it up like the one that's no, no. existing. No, um, no. You'd have to pull. The only problem is then we look into winter maintenance. Does the township keep that area clear all the time? Because if it's there and then insurance companies know it's there and we're not using it for whatever reason, that could turn into a lawsuit against us. To my mind, if you're going to put a, a hydrant up there, you might as well put somebody there with an axe and chop through the ice and drop the hose in for a pump. It's the same thing. Same yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. That was the oh, whole premise hungry. between the Fruz faucet putting it out there. No, no, for sure. But I'm just thinking. Of, I'm just thinking of secondary, secondary option, which is always wow. there with just pumping. Secondary okay. option is drop the hose in the river right there yeah. at the bridge. Yeah. Well, that's a long way down. What? Five, six feet. Yeah. So I wouldn't suggest that just because it's more. You're <laughs> twenty you'd be at probably about two, three grand to put a dry hydrant in there. Meanwhile you have the faucet downstairs, which is still working with our portable pumps, but it's, like I said, it's a matter of the maintenance schedule for it, if we can implement one for that. And then if it's like I said, it's up to council and all that if they want us to continue running portable pumps off the side of it or if we want to put some money so then we can just hook it directly to our truck. But that is up to council and how much money they want to put into this. What if the uh, hydrant was uh, was redone so that you could get a draft out of it? Would that solve anything for that end of it? Honestly, the best option could potentially right now to see where it works is maybe fix up the hydrant itself there so then we don't get the air pocket um, on the cap yeah. itself. And once we start getting that flow, if that air is gone, we might be able to start drafting at that point too, right? Once we have that water mm -hmm. coming in, we can suck a lot more water through. I believe it's a six inch pipe. I'm not sure. We haven't really been able to find any drawings on it. Um, Jim Peru told me he believes it's six, but I've also heard it's a four inch. So there's a big difference on how much water can come through both. Mm -hmm. right. That one out. Um, and like I said, if we can fix the hydrant itself, fix the caps on it, we can definitely, before we even look at the option of a pump house or anything, go try it again. Do it in stages and see if we can fix it. I would suggest that's probably the first step is try to fix what's there so it works how it's supposed to. And then if that doesn't solve the problem, then we go on to the next step. Mm -hmm. Surely it wouldn't be that much of a problem. Even if we had Kevin, the recreation guys, every time they go into the park, they could stop there and clean that screen off. It wouldn't take long, right? Just yeah, to keep like the screen I, like clear. If, if you had a rake with a decent length of a stick on it, you could do a lot around the outside. I'm trying to picture, is the inlet, cause it's a square, uh, is it not a square uh, manhole box? It's a, uh, it's a round. So it looks like it's essentially a giant round drainage tube with a cement top on the top of it. And it has uh, yes. a hole drilled all the way around it. But like the first time in, we went out there, we were trying to put a leaves blocking the bottom. So it wasn't getting enough water in. 
I think if we cleared some of that brush out of there and had somebody on a regular basis check it, uh, and then have, like Derek suggested, fix the threads at the at the street end. I I think uh, that might be as best as we're going to get unless we do something major. The the other thing that I've seen done is to uh, have a larger cage around it, so that the water can still get in, but uh, not enough to let let the leaves in, and that would let it. You'd still have to clean it out, but it wouldn't be as uh, often or as critical. So right. just another thought. Yeah. Yeah, sure. like a. Like a crusher room. screen, a cr like a fine half inch crusher screen would be awesome. Yeah. Put it all the way around it. Okay. I think uh, maybe we better have a, a kind of a staff public works fire and recreation discussion on this internally mm -hmm. and see what we can do to maintain it and maybe improve the consistency of the uh, and reliability of the unit just another question real quick Derek once the pond freezes over if the leaves are kept off the screen on a regular basis once the pond freezes over that then would reduce or relieve the danger of the leaves getting sucked into it right for the most part yeah for sure because uh, how that layer of ice over top so the leaves will just land on the ice so it'll right. only be uh, the spring spring clean summer fall Roughly, even in the summer, you might not even have to do it. Just spring and uh, fall, essentially, rake them out. Right. And I haven't gone and checked that hydrant out in, uh, in the winter yet. My worry is in the actual sauna to, uh, drainage tube itself, it goes down probably about six to eight feet, which is fine. But the exterior of it, uh, where between there and land, is about two and a half feet, three feet deep. So I don't know if it's going to freeze. And so allow water to go in, or else if we're going to have to raise the dam level a little bit, right? Yeah, that's impossible. So we need to get you a set of hip waders. <laughs> oh, I went swimming in there already a couple weeks ago to go find it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need, you need a marine unit. That's that'd yeah, be the next yeah. thing for sure. The, uh, it's not that far from shore that we shouldn't be able to get a high hole to reach in there too. The problem, yeah, the only issue is you're looking down the hill, you're about six six feet down the hill and about four feet in, right? For your high hole to be able to reach it. That's what, uh, when I was talking to Phil Wilson, he said it's probably out of reach that way, plus the brush. I, don't, I, I just don't, I can't picture it because I was part of help us install, like by construction installed it, and I was there when they were doing it, so I. I anyway. was just thinking, would Randy not have drawings of that? I'm Always not wanted. sure. Uh, that was kind of a we. I think between Fru and I, we designed it. And there should either be a fire, uh, a file downstairs or in the fire chief's office. You've never seen anything. Uh, <laughs> talk about having qualified people design shit. I'm thinking, oh my god. Oh, no, no, it's, it's, yeah, we have the CEO and a couple guys from town draw this up. No. We just dropped her in the ground, and it's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had natural fall. I mean, fruit was a big part of it, but I mean, it's, oh yeah, it that helps need, a lot. It doesn't need a ten thousand. Probably has design. a patent on it or something. It doesn't need a ten thousand dollar design for a five thousand dollar project. <laughs> but, I mean, we told had, your house it's burning though. Yeah, we had water flowing good, and it works well if it's opened up for sure. So let's see. Well, what I, I guess I, I guess I made the assumption quite wrongly that it was being maintained, and uh, I suppose that it was uh, not right. Okay, have we chewed on that one enough? You got a bit of direction there, Dave, to to deal with that one. I think Derek does. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I All right. We'll get something done. All right. Fire department new hires discussion. I guess that's Derek as well. Yeah. Um, so we, when we advertised this year for new auxiliary members, we had 17 applications come in and we narrowed it down to eight individuals. Um, Essentially, we have, like we talked about the other day, Deputy Chief is leaving. Um, eventually, some of these older gentlemen will be retiring. 
eventually it's just bound to happen. Um, so we're going to be replacing, we feel these eight individuals are a good selection. They all are very close to the fire hall. Um, lots of the candidates were great candidates, but it came down to uh, a lot of it to location close to the fire hall because you need people on the trucks to get the trucks there instead of everyone meeting you outside of town. Um, so they will be starting hopefully in January. I will be bringing a report to council for approval on that one. Um, I think this will bring our numbers up to 35 as per ENR bylaw. I was just wondering some direction. So it says we're allowed a uh, fire chief, four captains, and then 30 volunteer firefighters, and then five auxiliary. Is the chief, deputy chief, not included in those 30 firefighters, or how does that work based off that? Good question. <clears throat> I don't know. My guess would be the chief and the deputy would not be included in that, but uh, Madam Clerk, would you have any insight to that? Um, short answer, no, right now, but <laughs> <laughs> we can. What do you think, Dave? So what do you want to do again? You want to interview these people? Already interviewed them. So the, the issue where it comes down to is the fire chief position is the deputy fire chief position and even the full-time FPO. If you look at our organizational flow chart on uh, the ENR bylaw, which is a schedule, which means it also can yeah. be changed. Um, it has the chief position, deputy chief position, four, acting, or four captains, and it says 30 volunteer firefighters and five auxiliary are the full-time positions classified as those 30 volunteer firefighter positions no okay there we go i think i think you're excellent you're with your with your uh, org chart your volunteer fire deputy fire chief would be a volunteer it's on there it says deputy fire chief vacant like it was part-time with Warren, right? He was technically a South Key employee part time, not volunteer anymore. Right. We did have him for what, five or 10 or 12 hours a week or something. You're right. We had him for uh, 32 hours a month. Yeah. So you can have, so you could have uh, beyond those three positions, the 30 volunteers, you could have 35 with the, the, the uh, auxiliary. Okay. Because that's what I was planning on going with. Um, for example, we never used to have this many people, but other uh, departments are kind of, uh, they were kind of questioning it, but now they see why, and it looks like they're starting to follow suit because before we used to have daytime issues, now we're getting average 14 guys to a daytime call just by having larger numbers. At That's nighttime, wow. 20, 22, 24 guys showing up for fire calls. So now we are not relying so much on mutual aid. We can handle our own calls. Um, we're seeing some issues that might happen in the uh, Melanchthon might be asking if we can do an automatic aid agreement with them in the future due to the fact that some of the other departments in Dufferin County that service Melanchthon, they can, they're having issues. They're getting four guys for a daytime call. Mm. They're getting some times where they can't roll a pumper out because they don't have the guy with the DZ showing up, but we're getting the 14 guys on average during a daytime call where we're able to go there and put out the fires. So Yeah. That's mm -hmm. Have you got exciting. enough pails? Pardon me? Have you got enough pails for all 14 to pitch water onto the fire? Or? Well, oh yeah. Well, even uh, <laughs> in Holton, so we set up that automatic agreement with uh, Wellington North. So anytime there's a structure fire in Holstein or that section of Southgate, we're getting called at the same time. Um, the recent fire there, they had, I think, six guys, and we brought 10 out there ourselves right off the hop. So nice. um, that's, to me, especially in the Southgate region, that's us. There's still our taxpayers. There's still our community. We're yep. showing up with a lot of guys to help try and uh, mitigate that problem really quick. So, yeah. No, that's great. That's great. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, so, so you got definitely a signal of morale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're good with that, Derek? You got your answer? I got my answer. Like, right on. If you, 
if you refer to the ENR, the ENR bylaw, I think if you go in there, it states that fairly clearly. Yep. That's kind of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So we'll move on then to the truck tender discussion. What's uh, what's to be discussed? That's back to you, Derek. So we kind of solved this one ourselves recently in the last couple of days. Um, we Good. were a little Excellent. worried. <laughs> we put that truck tender out and uh, I was getting some feedback from some uh, individuals saying, uh, well, we can't, we can't deliver a truck by in 400, 500 days. There's some of them are at 800 days out. So we were having issues where we were wondering what was going to happen if we had one tender. But there was a little bit of a hiccup where somehow our tender ended up on bid and go. And it only was uploaded, I don't know how. I spoke to a bunch of people. They don't even know how it made it on there, but I guess it's found its way on there. And it only had six days on there. So we we're doing an addendum to extend it. So now it seems like we're getting an interest about of six or seven companies that are going to submit a tender for this truck. So. Are you there? Did he get the eject button or? He must have been really impressed with that. <laughs> so that was the end of the meeting. Yeah, well, when you said you solved it yourselves, you then you got to love this internet, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> I just thought you were late. You guys still hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. So I presume the truck tender issue was dealt with? Yeah, it's being extended and there'll be more people bidding on it. So it is dealt with as of now. So when's the close date now? I think we have it as December 3rd now. Okay. Give Brian a minute to come back. We'll try this again. So you want to just say, yeah, the capital and the operating is good and call it a day or? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, Brian, try turning your video off um, and you might be okay with audio. They can try it. You look better, too. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. So you wouldn't have had to dress up so much if uh, if you'd known you were going to do That's that. That's right. That's right. Well, Derek's in his work clothes, so I guess I can be. <laughs> All right. So uh, are, we on, are, are we on to the budget stuff? Yes. Okay. Well, if my yeah. internet craps out again, I'll I'll have to I'll have to phone in, same as Mike. So. What uh, what needs to be uh, what's the discussion for the budget? So, with our new truck coming in for uh, the tenders out for it right now, um, there is there was never any line item in the capital budget to replace our rescue van. 
which is already over 15 years of age. Um, so we sort of slated it into 2023 for a rescue truck. Um, essentially, it would be not that big rescue van we have anymore. It'd be like an F450 with a, a water tank on it and some sides called a mini pump. It's about half or uh, a quarter of the price of a big truck. And that's sort of the thought process on that one is then all of our trucks would be able to carry water because we are a fire department. And uh, we wouldn't need the big eight person people mover since the new truck will be carrying uh, six people in it versus the truck is being replaced, which is a two-seater. I just thought, any discussion on that? Well, I like your thinking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, uh, I guess uh, as, as long as you are gonna get or hope to get what you need to do the job, then that's what we need to try to sell to council, right? I'm going to just jump, I'm going to jump in here for a second. What um, and maybe this is more of a discussion from a budgeting because I've been looking at the numbers um, in relation to municipal office and ambulance and fire bay and and uh, building you know, occupancy. Where are we going to put the building staff? So Derek, just to start, where, how are we funding the uh, new tanker truck? So this is my dilemma that I've discussed last year with some of you, uh, some of counselors as well, is all the funding for these trucks, it seems it's a little bit coming out of reserves, but the way it's always been set up is there's a payment plan. Where sort of last year, I brought up the idea that I think we were under budget by 200,000 could we not commit that to a reserve and use that money that we don't spend towards our new truck so we're not always making these payments um, if you look at the budget itself for the rescue pumper we're paying on it for 15 years so we're paying on it the whole life expectancy of the vehicle we're making payments every year out of our capital budget towards that and then when we get a new truck we're adding more payments and there's two or three trucks in the next 10 years which is X amount of payments. Still, nothing ever goes back into the capital. Or I was wondering eventually if, like, if we don't use all of the operation, is there a way to put that into the reserve to then use towards a truck in the future year? Okay, so that's a good part of the discussion. Um, and I guess what I want to do is, how much do we owe on that, on the one that you just bought? You know, the one. So the pickup truck itself no are, are you, you're talking about payments you're making on the uh, on the uh, pumper truck so the tender the tender there's going to be payments on that new truck that comes yeah. new okay truck. so we've got we don't have payments on any other trucks right no but we will have okay. payments next we will years. have and, okay that's so we have money and i'm not sure the breakout but we have money in uh dc's and I would think your truck that you want to replace the, the van with or the the emergency vehicle with that you're hauling people, uh, the rescue van, there's 106,000 in reserve. And I'm sure there'll be a bit more go in this year with uh, like we've got a million bucks going in or more this year from DC. So there could be another, I don't know, 50 or 60,000 go in. So there's 106. <laughs> And then you have this uh, building reserve that I think could be considered, uh, you're at the point where I don't think you can build a bay on your shop because I think we've got to look at kicking the ambulance out someplace else. And the, the ambulance should not be your problem. You've got 243,000 in reserves there. So when you add these two together, you've got $350,000 worth of reserves available to you. Now, that would only pay for about likely half of your truck, right? Your tanker. So the new truck is rated around 700,000. It's not gonna be quite 700,000. So yeah. right now oh, on the capital budget has 90,000 from reserves are from DCs for that. And that's it. When talking with okay. your treasurer about any other DCs, 
if it was rated at that time for an expansion, it has to go towards the expansion. Correct. It just Correct. Relocated it so that money from the bay can't just be relocated to a new truck. And that's it for the truck is 90,000 out of DCs. The rest is 531,000 in debt that we're paying off over the next 15 years. The rescue, right. when we replace the rescue, we have it slated for 2023. It'd be at about $150,000 for the vehicle. That's all debt payment over the next 15 years. And then okay. when we go down into another truck, it's more debt payment. When we get a new one in the future years to replace the tanker, that will have to be replaced. It seems like will there the, be? there's always debt for the fire where if we were under, like I said, if we were under that 200 grand, I don't know if it's possible. I know it got relocated to roads department, but do we not just keep that into the fire? That way we're not always paying payments, but that's up to council as well. Or else our numbers well, are just gonna keep going up. Right. No, I get it. Mm -hmm. But there is some there is some uh, sense of, you know, should the past pay for the new future or should payments pay for it? Um and we've always had discussions along that line. Um we can, just so you know, Liam's telling you what it is today but the next time we do a dc study we can always say well we've reasserted our our priorities and we no longer need an addition to the bay to the fire hall we want to reallocate those funds to a you know fire apparatus uh, growth because of the growth in our community and we they can do that through the study so uh, that's not too hard to do the 243,000 that you have is unrestricted fire reserve. So you can kind of, with a stroke of a pen of council, approve moving that money where you like. Uh, because there's no sense in $243,000 sitting there in the reserve. And then, you know, here we are making payments on a new truck to the order of a half a million dollars. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. well, and another option potentially too is like we do make revenue. Is there a possible for all our revenue we make sort of to go in towards purchases like that? Because I don't know where our revenue goes. It just goes in as the township revenue versus well, you know, yeah, it's it, put that towards the new trucks as well, put that towards equipment. You're 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 it's it's cutting dimes and counting nickels. I mean, it's the same difference. You count on revenue to offset your costs. Uh, we just need to maybe up the ante on what our capital contribution is to new equipment. Mm -hmm. And we maybe need to relook at our DC, new future DC, and say, okay, this community is growing, and we need 25% more capacity in our tanker, in our pumper, in our rescue uh, services. So, you know, you can start collecting more DCs for that, and maybe we should be doing that. Well, yeah, and that's the thing, too. It goes back to planning as well. Like I know we're doing a four-story um, seniors. Lotto is doing one, but then the next thing I know, I heard the medical center might be going four stories. If we start getting more of these four stories, council's got to be aware that you're going to be required to buy a ladder truck eventually too. Holy <laughs> mackerel! Yeah, that's why you want to keep them down below four story. One or two is not bad, but once you start adding more and more, you're going higher, building vertical then you need to be able to access, be accessible to get there. So that's just something else to keep in the back minds. I knew stories, that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> once you start building a lot of four stories, now you're uh, going down that road of a ladder truck. And that's not <laughs> Everybody's thrilled with that thought. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe limit it at three stories. <laughs> <laughs> or build longer ladders. Yeah. I don't know if you'll think that big. <laughs> so, Derek, what is the increase in capacity of the tanker truck that we're buying compared to what we have? So, the tanker truck, the gist of it now is we have Pump 7, which is a two seater pumper, carries a thousand US gallons of water. That's it. Stick, not a lot of people can drive it. We have about five guys here that can drive it. Um, the new truck itself is going to carry six firefighters on there. Um, yeah. It's going to carry 1850 US gallons of water on it. It's going to have a pump on it capable of being a pumper, but it also has a dump valve at the back so we can use it as a tanker as well. So that means we're getting a lot of water to the fire scene. 
like that's going to carry more water than our yeah. actual tank does itself will the will this pumper pump more pressure than the old one what's the pressure difference uh i haven't looked too far i was pretty well the same it's going to be pretty well the same i believe well one could say you've got a 85 percent increase in capacity well yeah with this water like i said with this water it gives us the opportunity of not calling mutual aid for the extra tanker because if we need it as a tanker we can use it that truck essentially would be able to go handle a vehicle fire all by itself because there's enough water to put a vehicle fire out by itself or a tractor in a field on fire um, it's going to allow us to run multiple calls at once which we're already seeing is happening here um, we're getting coexisting ex uh, occurrences we've had i think three or four this year where we're getting called out one way and we're getting another call that's just the lay of the land with our town growing. So this is just gonna be a lot, another tool in our toolbox allowing us to handle these situations. Like I would say you should be able to pretty close charge 300,000 to DCs for that new truck. So that means you gotta come up with 400,000. So if you took your 243 from reserves, you'd have to come up from 160 from taxation and about 300 from DCs. Uh, Liam says you have 90, and we could likely, uh, in the next DC study, capture another 100, 200, 190 to 200 or 200,000 in DCs. The, the payment thing not scary, as long as it's like to me, the 15 years part is what's scary, is that we're gonna end up with trucks overlapping each other with the payment plan, and then we're gonna yeah. end up down this road where we're gonna have one or two years of all payment plan and we're not going to be able to buy our bunker gear or scbas the stuff that we regularly need to buy we likely need to be looking at about a 70 to seventy-five thousand dollar contribution to new new equipment in fire every year mm -hmm. is, there, uh, the is, there, is there an opportunity to uh push up the revenues from the uh surrounding municipalities that we deal with so with that as you guys remember we uh talked to we renegotiated the wellington north agreement we are now saving i think it was around twelve thousand dollars a year off that because we lowered that we used to pay them seventy two thousand dollars a year for coverage now we're only paying them fifty thousand for the exactly the same service they were providing so we're saving money there right. that we can technically relocate to our capital and the blanket right. agreement which is the next one we were only collecting thirty-two thousand off there i've now increased that to forty thousand which is the new agreement that will go to council but also the ability that if we're going to their controlled burns that are violating their burn by law that we can bill for our cost recovery as well so we can increase our dollar value the forty thousand is a flat rate but we might see fifty thousand sixty thousand a year out of there too so Right, right. What about West Gray? Uh, West Gray, our agreement's up. We're going to have to sit down and renegotiate that with them. Their call volume should drop a little bit because of now we're getting toned out at the same time as Mount Forest, where before this agreement, whenever Mount Forest had a fire call in Southgate, they were automatically calling West Gray. So that added to their numbers. So we're gonna to wait to see how their numbers roll in this year, see how many calls, and then base off that how much we should really be paying them. Right, right. Do we, we, do we have an agreement with West Gray that has financial? I don't think so. Like we pay them flat rate a year. We have the agreement, the fire protection I would, agreement. With them. I would think we'd have to pay them something. Yeah. Well, you'll remember, Brian, when I bring this up, you'll remember that we had that library fire. Oh, I know. And everybody yeah. just, everybody go to your corners and provide the service. Well, now it's fine with the library, but I, I'm not sure we ever got there with the fire because okay. at one point, at one time, there was the Durham Fire Board and Southgate or Egremont was part of that and we owned some of that right. equipment, right? Right. Well, that's all gone now, but I would think that the, if they're not charging us to come into Southgate, maybe they should be. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't lose as many foundations. I don't know. 
<laughs> do we, do we, are we involved in the ladder truck? Where, West there? Gray? No. Yeah, West, oh, we're not, okay. I don't think so. I don't think so. You haven't seen anything on that, Derek? Uh, sorry, you froze up. You, you haven't seen anything on the part ownership in the ladder truck in Durham? I've, I've heard rumors. That's how, the rumors is Bill is really good with it, is that the old fireboard or whatever, Southgate contributed a third of that money to that truck. And so whenever we request that truck in Southgate, we get it for free. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's something. That's what I thought too, because remember, remember the uh, went for a bit of a spill and somebody paid for the whole new one. Oh yeah, yeah, insurance. And that was uh, kind of our win too. Ah, huh. well, that's news to me. I didn't think we. Were, I thought we were. Yeah. I thought West Gray had paid us, uh, paid us out of that program, but maybe not. Anyway, okay. it might be worth it. Might be worthwhile to touch base with Phil and and see where we're at with that one. Just so that everybody's square. Yeah, I'll talk to Phil. I know he's really good. He's offered it to me before, I think even last month, that whenever we need it, it's coming over here for free. Um, like I said, that's for the ladder truck, but the fire protection agreement, we do pay them X amount a year. Okay. So, All right. So uh, maybe what we should do, Derek, is kind of pencil out the next 10 years of, like, do you have this second uh, replacement for it'll be in your capital budget now. So we have slated to replace the rescue in 2023. We just threw that in there this year. It's a new addition. I thought that okay. 150 because that truck is already expired as per NFPA standards. Right. So what <laughs> we should do is maybe look at uh, that's great, but how are we going to? I know it's in the budget, but what, how are we going to fund that thing over time so these payments maybe aren't as ridiculous as what you're thinking? We can't put that offline. All right, any other budget items that we need to discuss? Um, I got one other thought process. I've talked to the mayor about this one before. Um, <laughs> the mayor knows exactly what it's going to be. Um, Due to the new FPO position, <laughs> all that. <laughs> Can we see about the future? We don't have to do it right now, but not buying a brand new vehicle, but looking for like a five thousand or six thousand dollar like Ford Escape that we just put stickers on the side for the FPO in case he's got to go one way, I got to go another way. It's a it's a thing that I think eventually we're gonna have to do anyways. The um, fire prevention officer should be a lot like the uh, uh, building inspectors be on the road a lot of the time, um, and especially if if uh, if we outfit a vehicle or get, with a laptop or a a, um, uh, a unit of some sort in it, he, he can do a lot of his work from there especially with the size of the township. So I wonder if this is a discussion to get uh, uh, fire into that recreation kind of, you know, end of life roads department vehicle. Do you, you would want it to be red or? I you wouldn't be concerned about it. About it. Um, you I've talked to the roads department about it already. They have like a, what's coming up is like a two wheel drive, single cab truck, which to me isn't really enough room for that FPO. Like I said, what I'd be looking at, I don't know, is a little tiny Ford Escape, whether it's $5,000, doesn't need to be anything excessive, um, has a trailer hitch option on it because we do have two trailers here that we do have to sometimes tow out to fires. And usually right now someone's pulling it in their personal vehicle. Um, I don't know how insurance will feel too much about that if that person gets in the collision pulling a fire department trailer and on their way to a fire call. Because I know some places, some insurance companies want uh, to know if they are responding in their personal vehicles to fire calls. So that way. That's not, that's not a good, uh, that's not a good way to operate really that way it's been for years though right unless we get that second vehicle that doesn't have to be anything yeah. fancy just something you put some stickers on the side of it 
and they're identified as a fire department vehicle and there you go so you can that will stay here overnight if they get a call too they can tow that truck like we can take both trailers out now to the calls with southgate vehicles with the way the insurance thing is now towing our vehicle or our trailers with the personal vehicle is just not a good deal yeah that's why this idea is brought up for here now well, I'd be surprised if you got anything that's roadworthy for four or five thousand oh, dollars, and you're just going to run into a and you're just going to run into a pile of repairs. So I, I would suggest, Derek, that you, uh, if you're if you're going to make the case for another vehicle, you might as well make the case for a decent one. Okay, I just didn't know how how much yeah. like, would... vehicles don't they don't go that much travel. They do travel, but they're not dri driving to Toronto or something every day, right? So I didn't know how much council would want to put into a vehicle like that, whether five to 10 grand, like you can find something used. It doesn't need to be brand spanking new, that's for sure. There's something capable of moving uh, FPO around and pulling a trailer potentially. Right. I'd be looking at it. I'd be looking at a new demo or something like that than trying to buy someone else's problem. So you want something that's reliable, you're going to just be able to go out there and go and do what you want with it without having to. So. I mean, a Ford Escape, you're fairly cheap for those. They're not like a fifty or eighty thousand dollars. Like you're not oh, going to have true. a lot of use. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe to get started between the building department end of life of those vehicles, because you know they'll likely have a couple hundred thousand on them and still have some good life for what you need. Or one of the pickups. I mean, we're trading a pickup for near every year now, and you'd like them because they're red. So uh, anyway. <laughs> Let's let's look internally before we look external to you know make sure we take advantage of the, the fleet we have. Yeah, even if no, even if it's a make, if it's a make do for the first little bit while we for sure for figure sure. out money and sort things out. Yeah, like I said, the only main thing would be if there's a trailer hitch or like it needs to be somewhat all wheel drive or something, right? Because we're going out yeah. to have in any condition. A two wheel drive, rear wheel drive pickup truck isn't really gonna do us too much good, I don't think. I but. think all the four, all the public works trucks are four by fours now. Let's see what the next end of life one is they got because I think they have one coming here shortly, or they've got it. Well, I'll I'll, I'll remind the rest of the committee that this is how the fire chief's uh, seventy-five thousand dollar pickup started out too. So, yep. <laughs> let's not forget that. <laughs> and well, I'm not begrudging them the nice pickup. But I'm just saying that's how this started out. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Uh, we, and we, we just won't buy this one from Mayford. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and we'll make sure the quarter panels are decent. Because <laughs> I think they were done when we got it. But anyway, good discussion. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Um, hey, okay, anything else, Derek? That, you, you know, you might as well pile on now, right? No, that, that's really all I got for the budget um, capital operation wise. Um, I'm going to try and hopefully work with Liam and create some line items. There seems to be some uh, redundancy here. Like I have two, I have three accounts that bring in revenue. Two of them, I do not know what the difference is. There is money from the same call, like different calls, but the same type of call going into different accounts and there's an MTO one. I also sort of think it's right. important to build a line item of disposable, well not disposable, but consumable items because a lot of our equipment and supplies budgets, you'll see the line items. We're spending money on uh, foam or uh, absorball and stuff like that, but that's all stuff that we bill out. And so we recoup the cost from it, but it doesn't reflect that on our uh, budget there for easier for council to read it'll just show equipment and supplies so if we spent our line items only twenty thousand on it and we've actually spent 25 some of that five thousand dollars is consumables that we've actually recovered the cost of but it's just not easily read so right. it could be misleading and are you coding these invoices and coding revenue so the when revenue I say that coding we yeah, I don't ever see that. 
when I have to buy the supplies ahead of time, though, I have to code it as equipment or supply. I can't really code it as revenue if I'm purchasing it. Yeah. So I think we need to talk about, uh, I know finance doesn't like to have too many codes, but if you need extra codes to see the expense going in and the revenue, or sorry, the revenue coming in, the expense going out to offset, we can do that. Yeah, I just think it's more transparent and easier for council than to understand. Because if they look at our uh, equipment and supplies, they may see, oh, you're over 4,000, you bought extra equipment this year that you shouldn't have bought. A lot of that is the consumables that we've actually built and received the money back for, but it yeah, doesn't right. show that. But I think what's more important is is it gives you the opportunity to see that that offsetting revenue is coming in and it didn't get missed and being billed or get in the wrong bucket or something. You can look into it. So um, that's good. It gives a truer picture of the of the absolute uh, of the expense and revenue for sure. For yeah. sure. Okay. Hey, else? Just, I'm just kind of wondering ahead. the donations that we get from uh, funerals and other things. Is there any way that we can capitalize those into a purchase of a, uh, a vehicle for uh, this nature that we're looking at? Wouldn't that be something that people would want to uh, promote? So, with the donations, there's a separate firefighters association fund itself that we have that's a non -prof or non for profit i guess organization that we've had for years that usually the donations come to that uh, account there is money in there like currently right now one of the projects that all those donations from funerals are going towards is uh, the restoration of the 49 dodge the dundalk's official first fire truck there so some of that money's tied up in there, but we can look at that option as well. Um, They've, it's also been used to buy boots for the firefighters, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. the, new le the new leather boots and so on. Um, that's the money, like, I mean, anytime there's, uh, well, the fireman's frolic money goes in there. Uh, we don't have a count of that. There's, an, a, there's a group of firefighters that account for that money. I, I guess, just remember years uh, ago when we built, got the first rescue van, it was a fundraiser rescue van because we had it on the wall of the fire thing. Every time we people donated money to uh, to put that vehicle into service, right? We were the first ones in the area. Yep. Mm Oh, it's, def it's definitely an option. Um, it's just a matter is is it going to be that's the first time Jesus purchasing? Christ. We're not going to we're not going to be able to afford a brand new uh, vehicle just off the funds from there. Considering we're spending, I think it's sixty thousand dollars into restoring the forty nine Dodge, which is a capital, well, essentially is the asset of the township due to the fact that it's still in the township's name. Wasn't wasn't most of that money though, or all of that money from that? Vern St. John uh, fund? Yep, from his uh, estates. He, yes. his uh, final estate donated that money towards that truck. Yeah. How soon are we going to get it back? The plan was for this Sunday for John to go on that truck, but essentially it's not, it's not even close to being done yet. So I don't okay. know. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Brian back. We'll have to get him an office in the uh, Holstein council chambers. No, it'll be easier. We can just tell Barb to pick him up on her way over and uh, they can they can use the office down there together. I don't think he heard us. No. <clears throat> okay. Um, 
Mike, are you there? You're the vice chair. You want to step in? Yeah, I'm here. So next item on the agenda is the Melanchthon Township Fire Protection Agreement. Derek? Um, I basically covered it. It's we're looking to finalize it. Clerk's department is just reformatting it. Then I'm going to send it to Melanchthon to get their uh, approval on that from Denise. It's roughly looking at forty thousand dollar flat rate. It used to be uh, a twenty, I think it was a twenty four thousand dollars they pay, and then seven in reserve. I just got rid of that that's old fire board thinking and just put a flat rate of 40,000 we can assign that money to reserves if we choose to from there and the option of billing for uh, non I don't classify as open air fire if they're not following the burn permit that's not really fire suppression that's an issue we need to somewhat get our cost recovery back from that as it's seen, we're spending lots of time chasing down fires or people creating fires that aren't following their burn permits. So that will allow us to generate more costs over the 40,000. The idea is the Melanchthon agreement will offset the Mount Force agreement. So we're split even on that, hopefully. Anyone have Brian, any questions? Are you... <laughs> Brian, are you back? Oh, I thought I think I am. I don't know. I tried my uh, thought I'd try my iPad and see how that worked, but of course that's not working real great either. So Councillor Shearson, assume the chair while you were gone, but if you're back, then you can take over again if you'd like. Yeah, yeah. So what have we bought <laughs> while I was away? Wood chipper. <laughs> wood chipper. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we probably need one pretty bad, I'm sure. Or we can get rid of that wood around the Bruce faucet. There you go. There's always something to be done. Yeah. So now that I'm on my iPad, I can't see my agenda. What's next, Madam Clerk? So we discussed the Melanchthon Township Fire Protection Agreement. Did you have anything to add to that? Was the agreement to just let them burn or what? <laughs> no. Unfortunately, <laughs> we have to actually uh, put out their fires for them. Don't worry. All right. So well, next that's fine. So if, go ahead. Next, the uh, new or unfinished business, which there wasn't anything um, on the agenda. So I guess if anyone else has anything new to add, <laughs> should I, should I ask for good news and celebrations? <laughs> that's, that's next. Members' privilege. Oh, okay. All right. Is there any new business? Seems like that's all we've done hour. today. Yeah. yeah. All right, not hearing any. Next item is good news and celebrations. Anybody got anything? Just one thing, Dave. I might, uh, if I could ask you while I got you on the phone or on the line here, the email you sent out about JT's uh, thing on Sunday, at one point in your email, you say, plan on being at the fire hall at two. And then a little further down, you say, Plan on being at High Point at 145. Sorry, they they plan on being at the fire hall at two. Sorry. They being? The parade. Right, okay. We're gonna be at the, but I'll send a little note out to, uh, to clarify your interpretation. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm surprised, uh, I'm surprised another counselor hasn't already asked that question. Too busy on library issues. Oh, okay. I thought it was maybe parade she was worried about this week. All right. Okay. Anything else? I have nothing unless anyone has any questions regarding this weekend. Oh. Then. All right. Well, then yep. I'll uh, I'll declare because the agenda has been completed, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Bye now. Bye.